Okay, I'm recording now. So, uh, hello Patricia, uh, start. Yomeli. Okay. Uh, hello Patricia, nice to to meet with you by Skype. Thank you for your thank you for your attention. I'm very glad to speak with you. Uh, for for our viewers, it's very important to know. Uh, how is going the situation uh, around the earth, around the planet, uh, especially uh, your books uh, and the uh, program behind the matrix are uh, focused to inform and to help of, uh, of, uh, uh, on the people. Can you explain, can you explain uh, your, uh, how, how, how everything is begin, how is begun everything? You mean how is everything going? Yes. Well, clearly, it's a very difficult time on this planet. And uh, we have a number of things that are creating us so much stress. For obviously, the superficial things like the financial markets, the government, and the One World Order, the Codex Alimentarius. And I say superficial, but I mean in that respect that these are things we're all well aware of now. They're no longer hidden. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think, for me, the most dire situation is the ecological imbalance on the planet. So um, we're scared. I know that most people are are very concerned about what the future holds. And of course, we have this December twenty first coming. So uh, a lot of people are building into this end of the world scenario. Now, my opinion about this is that the more people buy into that idea, the more it gets created by human consciousness. So my work and the work of the Syrian High Council and other beings that I work with is about getting people out of the fear, recognizing that we are immortal beings, so no matter what happens, we're covered. And this is really the essential idea that I'm trying to spread to people. Once you get the fact that you are immortal, then no matter what happens, you're covered. And if anything, you look at the disasters that are coming, the disasters that have been, as incidents on your passage through this place that you chose to come to, to experience this great ship. Yes, yes, you are right. Your book's Atlantis Rising, No More Secrets, No More Lies. The Cosmos of Soul and Behind the Matrix are very popular here in Bulgaria, let me tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The pe people very like uh, your uh, books. Uh, what is the common idea of uh, in this series? What, uh, what is their basic message? Okay, that's a great question, trying to tie it all into a, a, a little bow. Um, these books are born from my experience as a medium, uh, being able to contact, actually being able to reach other dimensional information. And we all have this ability, and I think it's going to increase with the, let's say with the period that we're in on the shift, more and more people will be able to receive this higher consciousness. But at any rate, the message, the predominant message is that we are moving through this great ship, that what appears to be uh, finality is nothing more than a transition. And that the reason explained by these beings called the Syrian High Council, which your readers will know, is that our solar system is going through uh, its own astral cord. It's going through a center. It moves through its own astral cord, which until now has been called the black hole. But suddenly, even the scientists are reverberating what has been said in the books, that it's not a black hole, it's an ascension too, just like we go out of our bodies. So does the sun, so do the planets. So the sun is going to move out of its, uh, through its astral cord and go through this transition, which some people would see as death, but which I, at the Syrian High Council, explain is a moving to a, a higher level of consciousness, a more refined energy, a much less dense energy. And all the planets in the solar system are going through as well. For unknown people, for uh, 
people who is not which are not uh, very uh, informed uh, from many books maybe this will uh, this look very very bad uh, what is your uh, advising to for to for, do, for to those for those people people i mean uh, how they will feel after this transition after this uh, uh, very important moment on the earth yeah okay well uh, you said for some people this is very bad i would like to suggest first of all that the total destruction of the planet is much worse to, to imagine than the idea that we're going through a transition where things are going to change dramatically uh, and that it's a very optimistic way of perceiving what's going to happen so for these people i would say imagine it's hard to imagine when you're in the density of reality. It's very hard. It's very hard to very imagine, hard. yeah. And time seems so real. And uh, these glasses seem so solid. But when you put them under a microscope, even plastic is moving around. Even, even the densest material so far is not steel, it's plastic. So uh, everything is in movement, and, every, and that means that everything is capable of change. This is a very important concept. If you perceive, if you understand that all the three-dimensional objects that we have are basically atoms in certain formations, and given the right environment, they can transform their form. Now, you take that out of trying to visualize the printer transforming, and imagine your own being, and recognize that you are a living bio unit of electromagnetic biological consciousness. Absolutely. And you can change. Just look at how when you go on a diet, you lose 50 pounds, how you transform yourself. And know that what what's being suggested to us is that the beautiful earth, which is a cosmic conscious being, is preparing to move into a lighter state of consciousness. And so are we. That means that a lot of the darkness and negativity and violence that is uh, vibrating, holding the planet down at the moment, will not be able to hold resonance because the planet will be too high vibrationally. So if we understand how resonance works, this is very exciting. It doesn't mean we're going to die. It doesn't mean we're going to burn in on our passage through the black hole. In some fire or something like this, yeah. No, because the Syrians say that you go through it faster than the speed of light. And it's hard as for us to imagine that. Again, quantum physics are starting to say, speed that's faster than the speed of light, and we just don't understand it yet. So it's very exciting to tell you that the quantum physics are starting to catch up with some of the teachings that have been presented in these books, which first came out, I think, 12 to 15 years ago, uh, and are very uh, appropriate for today. So to these people who are so afraid, I say, fear holds you in lower frequency. The wave of, of fear is a certain vibration. And the people who want you to stay in your powerlessness send out that vibration. They tell you the world is going to end. They tell you it's going to be taken over by robots or whatever. And uh, the way that you don't do that is to raise your vibration and understand that you came here for a reason. You knew when you were coming. You came here knowing. And you know on the ver at the very, very deepest part of your soul that you are and this is just a passage, and there's nothing to be afraid of. Amazing. Amazing. I believe this with my soul. I feel also. Uh, in uh, one of your books, I think it's uh, Atlantis Rising, uh, is in very big details you're speaking about Nibiru and Anunnaki. Um, you do a lot of channeling about this. Uh, the regular viewers will can ask, have you ever come across any material evidence of them? Of the Anunnaki? Yes. Boy, that's a tough question. Material... This question is kind of like what the skeptic will ask. Yes, skeptics, yes. This is a skeptic question, yeah, correct. And, you know, there are even 
imagine if I had an Anunnaki sitting next to me and I put him on the screen and said, here's the reptilian Anunnaki for you. Uh, the skeptic is not going to believe it. They'll say, well, this is a costume. This is true. Ruling, etc. It's like if Jesus Christ tomorrow appeared in the center of the main plaza in Bulgaria, in Sofia, people would think he's... They are coming, yeah, they are coming, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, I, I can't say that there is any proof, although we do have many glyphs, many symbols throughout different cultures. We have the information, uh, but of course so much information is has been needed to be secret until now. That's why I brought in the book, No More Secrets, No More Lies. Correct. Until now, we, until recently, we had to have these secrets because otherwise they would have killed all of us. And uh, because perhaps humanity wasn't really ready for that kind of intense reality. Uh, so we have symbols of how this all happened. And Sitchin, Zachariah Sitchin, did wonderful work. Zachariah Sitchin, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit different from what I received from the council. So my answer to you is no. I don't have any physical hard evidence yet. Yet, yeah. So yeah. pay attention to what I tell your, your viewers. Pay attention because we are we are really in a, a situation now where light beings are entering this earth, and the Anunnaki that are trying to control this planet are doing everything possible to not lose this. To don't wow. change the dimension, yeah. That's right. And they're coming out of the woodwork, and we are seeing things like shift, shape, shape shifting on television, things like that. But the only proof you have, there is no proof of anything. Nothing is provable. Are we strong enough in terms of energy to go on further, despite of their uh, male woman's intentions? I mean... Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand. Uh, yeah. Uh, are, are, are we have enough energy to be uh, to be in a position to to change the vibration against to the Anunnaki? You know, people. Some people are really losing hope and saying it's too intense, it's too big, it's too global. And I say, when you start to believe that, you are part of it. So start in your environment. Start in your own life. Start. With Family, make change, be the light you want to be the planet. Look at Monsanto is one of my things that irritates me the most. And now Poland has refused it. Hungary has refused it. France has refused it. And this is because of the pressure from people. Correct. And so do we have a critical mass where we're going to turn this around? Maybe not yet, but we are growing. Our numbers of, of the awake are growing. That's our. What I'd like to suggest to your readers is to remember one thing: the human race. It seems we have things have to get bad enough to make us move. So as dark as it seems right now, that is the trigger. We're being triggered. That's the trigger. Yeah, the critical mass. We must remove uh, the critical mass of human beings. Uh, no, I was. Yeah, that's right. The critical mass. Yeah. are rising incredibly around this planet. I, I travel all over the planet all year round, and I can't believe what I'm seeing. It's just uh, a huge awakening, and it's when humanity gets up against the wall, we finally say enough, enough is enough now. Good. And I think this is happening. Yeah. Next question. Uh, what words and means can we use to help people not to be afraid of such information. Uh, fear is the major instrument of manipulation, you say in your books many times. We'll be uh, able to avoid Atlantis doom. We'll be... Is this what's in the consciousness of the Bulgarian people? No, 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 no. no. Good. No, this is only... I, I try to, uh, to collect uh, different view of uh, our viewers. For that reason, I collect some little bit critic questions. Okay. You've got very good questions. As far as the, the, re the return of the Atlantean disaster, I really think a lot of old Atlanteans 
are on the planet now to make sure that doesn't happen. And I would humbly suggest that I'm one of them. So I have, I'm meeting a lot of uh, former Atlantean family. We're recognizing each other. And we're working with the oceans, we're working with the dolphins, we're working against the government, we're working on quietly in the background, along with all the other light workers on the planet. I don't think Atlantis can happen again because there's too much memory of that at the subconscious level, at the cellular level. A lot of the people who are alive now are former Atlanteans. And at that subconscious level, they remember the abuse of crystals, the abuse of power. And when it, the bell goes off, when it's time to decide, I think that they will be waking up. So all of this technology, I just saw something today where they're now coming up with glasses where you have your computer in your glasses. You no longer have to think. You no longer have nothing. You just put on your glasses and your virtual world is there and you go out of your house and you live your virtual reality. And we don't have to take those glasses, do we? Good. So what I tell people is stop giving away your power to these toys that they're pushing on us in order to dumb us down. Don't use them. Don't take them. Get back to nature. Walk on the earth with your shoes off. Listen to the heartbeat of the planet. And the more you are in that reality of truth and in contact with nature, uh, the less manipulatable you will be. <laughs> but no, I don't think it's going to happen. And I, what I'd like to tell you is I really do believe that until now, light beings from other dimensions and other planetary environments have had a quarantine on the earth. And that meaning they're a violent bunch. As long as they're going determined to destroy each other, that's not our problem. But the Syrian High Council have always said, once you are capable of destroying outside of your realm, then it becomes a problem for the Galactic Federation. That has now happened. Cross that line. And so light beings from many, many worlds are taking direction from the higher beings. I know this sounds a little wacky to the people who don't believe, but uh, I do. I do believe that we are getting assistance now. And this is part of the reason why I don't feel that we need to be afraid. We don't want to say, all right, come and save us. That's an old paradigm. We must save each other. <laughs> Otherwise, what are we going to do? Go to another planet and destroy it? So we have to face our karma. But I believe that we're going to be getting assistance. And I'm very happy. Me too. You say uh, the hurt, the hurt, uh, uh, we must listen to the hurt of uh, our Gaia planet, Earth. Uh, we know, everybody, we know that uh, now the uh, Schumann frequency is going uh, up and up. Now the, the frequency is uh, maybe around 14 or 15 hertz. Uh, is this uh, one of the signs for uh, these changes around the planet? Yes, this is a sign of Earth preparing for acceleration into the higher dimension. And other things that are happening are the discovery of the photon belt now plain evidence in NASA uh, research and visuals. The sun, the sun is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It, in fact, in the book it says, trust the sun. He knows exactly what he's doing. All right. We're getting all these solar waves, solar flares. The sun is going berserk. And this too is part of it. It's getting ready to pop out of this dimension. And it is not going to be the, like we've been told that we're going to go through a black hole and everything that goes through it is going to collapse. It's going to be faster than the speed of light. So fast that you could not possibly suffer because the brain could not communicate the pain to any part of you in time. I know that's a little bit uh, foreign to embrace, but we're talking about quantum realities that we are rapidly discovering now. And, and I even think a lot of the quantum physicians are really receiving their information from these beings. Yes. 
Okay, next question is around, uh, is, uh, is the effect of shortening the time a sign or is it a subjective reaction of individuals at the moment? I really believe that time is warping now because the time-space continuum, which is our elusive uh, vision of physical reality, this, let's call it this vibratory net, that we describe as the time-space continuum is warping. It has holes in it. It's, it, it is like, imagine a sheet of aluminum foil, and you're moving atop the foil, and then all of a sudden you come to a point where it's all crunched together. It's still the aluminum foil, but it's mutated. And it looks to me like we've been moving along on this, this elusive space-time continuum. And we're now moving into a place where this it's starting to war. Yeah. And so uh, the day, it's, I don't think it's because we do so much more than we did before. I find that I'm losing three or four hours a day. And even people who are not into what we're into are, are saying, I'm, where, where did the time go? But it, with a different emphasis, it's not casual. It's like very palpable. How is it possible that it's five o'clock? Yeah. And I think that we can't calculate it. We can't find a way to define it because we're still in linear time. But it's happening. Yes, I believe it's a very real phenomenon. And as the Syrians say, you're moving into the no time. And that is a concept that is very, even the more difficult to imagine. Okay. Uh, a lot of people feel dormant uh, when reading about the end of time. Uh, you already answered to this question. It's not necessary now. Yeah, uh, reading a book can inform, but not always changes people. D do they have to be scared in order to change? Isn't easier to for them to wait? Waiting oh. is a passive energy. Is, is a passive, yeah. So sitting around and waiting for somebody to change it or something to happen, to me is a passive way of looking at reality. What can you do? What, why should wait for what? Live your life right now. They are waiting to see this information from television, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You have this day. You wake up every morning, you have a new slate. What am I going to create this day? You can sit and wait for a miracle to happen or peace to come. Sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, but I believe in making every day count. What am I going to create this day? And then the next day is a whole new slate. So I'm not going to sit around and wait for somebody else to create my image and my reality. It's me. I want every day to count, every day to matter. And for me, this means uh, celebrating life, doing my best to help other people, doing my best to change the paradigm. Very good, very good. Uh, next question is, isn't DNA manipulated so deep in people that only few of them can uh, go to vibrational changes? Yeah. I, I think I will be coming soon to Sofia through my publisher. Oh, good. Uh, yes. Good to uh, see this. Good to, to hear. Maybe we can uh, meet each other, be my guest in my studio if it's possible. Oh, I would love that. Let's make sure that happens. Yeah. And so uh, my work with that is to accelerate the process for people. but And it's very powerful. I have to say that all over the world I'm seeing the people that I work with shift very big shifts. In the end, I think that the fact that the Earth herself is shifting, like you said, the uh, human resonance now is so high. Yeah. We are going to get this regardless. With the Earth shifting, it's not like the Earth can reach a new resonance and we don't change. We are cells of this planet. 
If you imagine the earth is a human being, and we are the cells within that body, everything alive is a cell within the body of earth. So if she changes, we change, of course. And then with all of these celestial influences that are coming, all of this is shifting human consciousness and at the cellular level, at the DNA level. But if we can give it a push, why not? That's what my work is to help people, uh, let's say, give it a little uh, push and activate things more, more readily, more quickly, more consciously. But in the end, I do believe that the nature of being alive on this planet means we are all going to have the memory of that DNA that's within us starting to remember <clears throat> what it's supposed to do. So um, just I want to add to that, again, with the macrocosm, microcosm, if you take the Earth as a human being, or as a, as a living being, if she tells every cell in her body, okay, activate, I'm now vibrating at 17 hertz instead of 8.7, yeah. then every cell in her body, her being, just like us, like when we are in our focused, most pure mind, and we tell our body to be well, to be healthy, and to vibrate at a certain level, it does. But what happens, we tell our body we're not beautiful enough, we're not thin enough, we're not rich enough, we're depressed, we're powerless, and so the body reflects that back. Okay? Very good. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, maybe the Last is not question is what is your message to viewers of uh, our program in few words if it's possible Well first of all I want to thank you and celebrate the fact that you embrace this work and I'm sure that means other work uh, similar and I want to remind you that you are beings of light stars from other realities other dimensions other worlds you chose to come to earth help rebirth Gaia and to be here for this enormous exciting transition and there are people from all over the world uh, and all over the galaxy focused on the earth so let's get into celebration and let's work to make it happen and move out of fear because if you're in fear and you buy into all the doomsday they've got you so raise your vibration celebrate who you are what you came here to do, get into the power zone and get ready for an incredible experience that you know you came to have. That's my intention. Let's prepare for celebrations. I've got the champagne ready. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Thank you so much. You're so kind. Thank you. It's been an honor. Uh, let's stop the recording.